so we talked about the procedure itself that there is enough scientific evidence today that UFE is a procedure which is accepted and there is enough evidence in the literature to say that this is a treatment option for fibro. So how do you select a patient for UFE? One, it is important to know that when the sides of the uterus because of these fibroids get larger than 24 weeks then it probably isn't such a great procedure because the symptoms relief may not be much. When it's less than 20 weeks it is a good idea and in between 20 and 24 we are what you may say in no man's land or an area where you could shift to this side or the other. So just let me show you some pictures as to how you would choose. Now the slide on your left side is a patient with a fibroid that is less than 24 weeks and that on the right is more than 24 weeks. As you realize that it has to be decided on an MRI scan and not on an ultrasound because it's MRI which not only tells you the size directly but also helps classify fibroids. Now when should you consider an alternative procedure? We have a patient who's got a uterus size of 20 weeks. Even then, when do you think this is not the ideal procedure? One, when you have a small pedunculated submucosal fibroid with a narrow attachment. It's easy to treat these by an hysteroscopic route. Pedunculated serosal fibroids, especially when they are more than 10 centimeters with a narrow attachment, are definitely not candidates for UFE. They do not shrink. Sometimes they might even detach themselves from the uterus and they are very prone to adhesions. So in other words, when you have a pedunculated subserosal fibroid, don't think of UFE because it's not the If you have a small pedunculated submucosal fibroid, again, this isn't the right one for the procedure that we offer. But at times you may get a lesion like this. This is a young lady. She's married, doesn't have children. She's got multiple fibroids. We are touching 24 weeks. Yet in this case, we did an embolization because she insisted. She knew if she went for myomectomy, she would lose the uterus. She didn't want that. And thus you can consider an embolization also based on the social and the clinical status of a patient at times. Here is another case where again you would have to think seriously whether this is a patient who is idly treated by embolization or surgery. Now this is a case like I said where the patient has got a combination of adenomyosis and fibroids and again are a group of patients where people would hesitate before doing an embolization. Now this is a patient where we actually embolize. It's a large submucosal fibroid but we asked for a hysteroscopic assisted evacuation after two weeks which helped the patient to a great extent in the sense otherwise this patient would have been bringing out foul smelling fragmented pieces of the fibroid. Here is another case where you would think seriously about embolization. The signals that are there show that there is probably a lot of calcium and again it is a uterus which is close to the umbilicus. Now what I am trying to highlight is so study your MR well before you decide to embolize. There is another group of patients in whom you should seriously ask for a second opinion before you take them up for fibroid embolization. One, prolapsing fibroids. Two, very small fibroids because the symptoms cannot be explained by the fibroids. Then if you have an adenexial mass and you are not sure what it is and of course if a patient has 
an endometrial abnormality which cannot be explained as fibroid on imaging. Candidates for further evaluation, fibroids with hematometria because the patient may be having an underlying malignancy, postmenopausal bleeding, definitely this is an unusual way for a fibroid to present, patients with severe atypical pain think of endometriosis first and then fibroids. What is our goal? Our goal is to infarct the fibroid. So the technique is we selectively catheterize the uterine artery on both sides and we embolize them with embolic particles. So this is how we do it under fluoroscopic control. We would puncture the right femoral artery in most instances. We use an Ann Roberts catheter. We enter the uh, contralateral uterine artery, inject polyvinyl alcohol sponge. The particles will deposit in the fibroid bed and after a point we'll have stasis. Once stasis is achieved, we'll take the catheter, take the loop right into the outer and bring it into the ipsilateral uterine artery and complete the embolization from the opposite side. So in other words, embolizing both uterine artery is a mandatory requirement for fibroid embolization. And the catheter is removed, the groin compressed and the patient sent to the room. Now, here are some pictures just to show the same technique that has been described. This, you can see the slide showing the uterine artery catheter in the right and the left uterine arteries. And you can see the vascularity which is common for fibroids. And you can see the end result after embolization when the vascular bed does not show any contrast and these cases of contrast. Now this is the Ann Roberts catheter. The picture on your right shows you the way the loop is. And so I would just show you the technique of forming this loop. So you take the catheter and park it across the bifurcation. Take an angle thermo wire and go down into the SFA. Take the catheter down and as you take the catheter down you'll find a radio opaque marker which is a point where the catheter is flexible and bend. So you would take out the wire now, push the catheter up, this forms a loop. And then as you tog and pull the catheter down, you bring it to the internal iliac and into the uterine artery. You would do the same maneuver for the opposite side. What is the normal recovery after a procedure? Normally we keep a patient at the hospital for 24 hours. They return to normal activity in 7 to 10 days. Now this again would vary. We have a lot of patients who go back after 3 days. But if you tell them 7 to 10 days, they know they may have a bit of cramps and dull aching pain in the abdomen, so they do not get worried. They may develop something called the post-embolization syndrome, where there is loss of appetite, occasional nausea, some myalgia, low-grade fever, a feeling of low energy, intermittent cramping, all this is usually there for a week or 10 days. What is the treatment? Give them non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and they should do fine. So just brufain uh, should do perfectly okay or you could just give them paracetamol or maybe you could just add a proxy one. So it would vary but just ensure that they are comfortable. Now this is some pictures that we should see to understand what is the effect of fibroid embolization uh, on a patient. Now this picture before and after shows the total vascularity of a tumor after we have embolized. And it's a post contrast study and you see that it doesn't enhance at all. This is something we used to do initially. We should do a CT for a patient after fibroid embolization and we would see stages of contrast within the fibroid 24 hours later showing that there is no forward flow and the rest of the uterus would look totally normal showing that it is preserved. 